Shalom. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and the Rakak Radash, which is the Holy Spirid. Call Halayim La Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakak Radash. Double honors to the men that taught us His true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is our apostles and our elders of the Church of Great Millstone, which is based out of New York, who are worthy of double honor. Shalom, peace and love, being to the 144,000 men that are laboring to push this truth, helping to edify the elect of the nation of Israel through pushing, you know, the true word, the true breakdowns. Shalom, peace and love to the rest of the elect that are out there, you know, which we call ourselves the hopeful elect. All right, and we're striving for a crown. All right, we're striving to all right, be one of those ones all right, that Yahweh Shah himself all right, puts a crown, you know, on top of their head, you know. And that's our goal. You know, that's what we're pressing forward towards. We're pressing forward towards, you know, salvation, you know, and deliverance, you know, to escape, you know, the coming punishments and the disasters, the judgments, you know, that are going to happen upon the earth, you know, which is recorded within prophecy. And what's set before us is, you know, life and death. All right. And we're reaching towards, you know, life by way of reaching towards this word, by way of reaching towards Yahweh Shai and our Heavenly Father Yahweh and clinging, you know, unto them. I believe there's a scripture in uh, either first or second Corinthians, which speaks about the house of Stephanus, uh, which addicted themselves into the ministry. And that's the mentality and the behavior uh, that we are trying to have. Our a brother um, brought up a very inter interesting scripture, you know, at camp yesterday. And that's what inspired this lesson, as well as um, the dream of one of the brothers, you know, daughters, you know, which um, I'll put that video link, you know, within the description box, which is truly inspirational. So I'm going to start off here in Yahweh Ratazah, you know, scriptures, you know, come to me, you know, for this lesson, which I have about two, you know, already prepared. But Yahweh Bashmi Awashai Ratazah, the Spirit gives me others. So that scripture being the book of Psalms, the 63rd chapter in verse eight, it says, because thou has been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings, will I will I rejoice And we understand through precept upon precept and through the scriptures are right, that the wings are dealing with the chariots, all right, which is going to be the ultimate form of how the elect are delivered you know, from the great destruction that's coming upon the earth in the form of thermonuclear destruction. All right, even the chariots themselves are going to destroy. All right, when you go into uh, uh, Psalms, the 68th chapter, all right, it speaks about those wings of gold, all right, and silver. All right, although you have a, a lion or lean amongst the pots, all right, thou shall be covered with, you know, feathers of gold. All right, right now we're in a low condition. All right, we're in a state of poverty. All right, and some of us are a little well off than others. But in comparison to how we lived when we lived in the state of Israel, when we were in our glory, this is considered poverty. And also considering, you know, how we're going to live. So we're in the lowest state. But however, we're going to be taken out of this place in a in a glorious exit, all right, in a in a in a grand style. All right, Yahweh Ratzar, we're part of that elect number. All right, men being the hundred and forty four thousand, and the rest of the, the elect consisting of men and women and children, making up, you know, the rest of the elect, the innumerable multitude. Verse 8, 
My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. So let's deal with that part. My soul followeth hard after thee. All right, that's the mind state and the mentality all right, that the Lord is putting us in. All right, to follow hard after him, to cling unto him. All right, to cling unto his son, Yahweh Shai. All right, as it states within the book of Baruch 4 and 28, as it was within thy mind to go astray, be in return, seek the Lord 10 times more. All right, we can't seek the Lord enough. We can't praise him enough. But this is the mind state that we have to be in to seek the Lord 10 times more. And to sum that up, we're given diligence all right, to make our calling and our election sure. The book of 2 Peter 1 and 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Mashiach. Now, I like the way that this reads within all right, the NLT, which I intend to uh, read right now. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those, all right, the Most High has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. And what does it mean to never fall? Well, you're never going to fall out of this truth. You're never going to fall out of this faith. If you're just around and you're not doing nothing, you're not doing any videos, all right, you're not showing up to any classes, all right, you're not showing up when brothers are getting together. All right, you're not occupying all right, until the Lord comes. That's how you fall away. All right, you have to constantly stay active within this thing. You can't be inactive. You have to constantly stay active. All right, making excuses not to come to camp or not to do videos. All right, in the spirit of complacency, laziness. If you do these things, you would never fall away. Then the Most High will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So the Israelites that, that get delivered, beginning with the 144,000, they're going to have a grand entrance into the kingdom of heaven. And the, the, the part of the dream that I reminded of, uh, the young, young lady said that um, an, a slave came up and asked, can I give them a tour around the, 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 the kingdom? And in the vision that, that she had, Yahweh said, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And that just reminded me of what the scripture says going into the book of Revelation, the 24th. 21st chapter Alright It says right here And I saw a new heaven and a new earth For the first heaven And the first earth were passed away And there were no more sea I remember it says that Esau Is the end of the world Second Ezra Alright the 6th chapter The 8th and the ninth verse Esau is the end of the world And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows So Esau heaven is passing away And a new heaven is being established, which will be the kingdom of Yahweh in the nation of Israel. So there will be a new heaven, a new rulership upon the planet Earth. And I, John, saw this, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from, from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this is speaking about the elect coming down with Yahweh Shai. It's not speaking about an actual city that's going to float down from outer space all right, through, the, through the firmament all right, into this, this, this earth. It's speaking about the elect that was delivered coming back with Yahweh Shai to reign over the planet earth.
So that's the grand entrance that you striving to be a part of. That's the grand entrance you want to be a part of. Because first of all, Second Thessal um, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, speaks about how the righteous is going to be delivered and taken up into heaven. They're going to be caught up into heaven. But they're going to come back down to rule over the planet Earth. That's the grand entrance you want to be a part of, man. All right, being a part of those that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Reading on, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. And in the kingdom of heaven, Yahweh Shai is going to be in the midst of us. All right, walking amongst us, being around us. We get to be around Yahweh Shai? Man. And then on top of that, the heavenly father will be in the midst of us. And we will be able to go in and out of the presence of the heavenly father having a new form. The, the corruptible being passed away, putting no incorruption. The mor mortal being passed away, putting no immortality, having perfect hearts with the word of the Lord inside of us perfectly, never sinning. That's, that's what the new covenant is. Which will go into effect in the kingdom. Or rather, once we get on the chariots. Never sinning again, being able to go in and out of the presence of the Heavenly Father. We can't do that right now. But we're given diligence to be a part of that, to be the first fruits. I'm going to go from here to the book of Second Ezra. All right, the second chapter, and I'm going to read a little bit of that. And then I'll close out. So this is Second Ezra. The second chapter, and I'm going to start around verse 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of the world, this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. I remember Yahweh Shai said that those that are that uh, confess him before men, the same shall he confess before the angels. Or they that confess him before men, the same shall he confess before the heavenly father. In, in the book of Revelations, it says he shall confess him before the heavenly father and the angels. So we, we testify Yahweh Shah openly. We're not like other groups that try to conceal the names or say that the names won't be given unto us until the kingdom of heaven else how shall we receive salvation? I mean, even when you go into the book of Joel, let's go to the book of Joel real fast. This is the book of Joel, the second chapter, verse 32 in the NLT. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For some, for some of Mount Zion and Jerusalem will escape. Just as Yahweh has said, these will be among the survivors who Yahweh has called. Now, when we read Joel, we know that it's Joel, the second chapter. We know that it's speaking about the thermonuclear destruction. So this is speaking about the day of the Lord. So how are you going to escape? You got to escape by calling on the true names. Back in 2nd Ezra 2 and 37, all receive the gifts that is given you. And be glad, giving thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. And we're led first by way of this word. All right, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which bringeth us to a kingdom, which we follow hard after. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that are sealed in the feast of the Lord, which is speaking of the elect. Which, ha which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of Yahweh Shai. 
And the shadow of the world is the uh, fleeing from darkness. Art fleeing from wickedness. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those that that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed, because the elect was predestinated from the beginning of the world. I, Ezra, saw upon Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. And they all praise Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai with songs. And in the midst of them, there is a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. It was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He, he answered and said unto me, These be they that put off mortal clothing and put on immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Then I said unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them? And giveth them palms in their hands, which palms is an indication of victory. You can go read about, you know, palms being used during the time of the Maccabees. Palms represent victory. All right. It's through Yahweh Shai that we're going to get the victory. All right. The victory over death. All right. The victory over the beast. All right. Over Esau, Edom, over this world. Then said I unto the angel. What young person is it that crown of them and give them giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in the world. Then begin I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh Shai. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders. All right, Yahweh thy power. Of Yahweh thy power thou hast seen. So this is what you are striving to be a part of. And this is the reason why you follow hard. After Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So that you can receive this. That was just read. And so the grand entrance can be ministered unto you. To enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. After being saved from the great judgments. The great thermonuclear destruction. All right. The end of Esau's world and coming back in style in a grand entrance into the kingdom of heaven. All right. Having a crown, having glory. Being a part of the first fruits. Giving all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And double honors to our apostles and our elders of the church of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and love being to the hopeful elect. Shalom.